and welcome to Conversations with the Goodman School of Business. I'm Susan LeBlanc and my guest today is Andrew Julie. Andrew is an MBA graduate from our very first MBA class, graduated in 2005. And welcome. Thank you. Okay. Well, excited to be here. Good. Um, just talking about your MBA class, you had your 10th anniversary this year. Yeah, it was uh, uh, amazing how fast time went and really fun to see um, everybody and what we've done. Yeah. I think we were... Uh, we were all mostly local kids when we started, and it's amazing yeah. how many people live well from here to Europe, and yeah. uh, and uh, some entrepreneurs and some successful finance people, and, yeah. and and people doing all kinds of things. It's really fun to, to to catch up with everybody. Yeah, it was great. It was it was a lot of fun, and there, there were I think uh, Carol was, came in from Europe. And uh, yeah, it was a great group, and it was good that you were able to come because uh, at one point you had a family uh, wedding, wasn't it? And yeah, then, but yeah. at the last minute, you were able to, to sneak away from the wedding and come to your reunion. <laughs> yeah, well, I had three three hours between the the reception or the the wedding itself and the the dinner yeah. reception, and and that happened to be exactly when you guys were doing the the yeah. cocktail hour. So. I showed up in a suit. I t tried to convince everybody it wasn't so that I was more successful than them. And uh, <laughs> so, and I should point out, it wasn't your wedding. No, no, my no, cousin's you, wedding. We, yeah. wouldn't, we wouldn't have yeah. t torn no, you away That would have got me in wedding. big trouble. No, that would have been very bad. Um, so uh, you graduated with, with your MBA, and you went on to work at RBC for a number of years, and that was going very well. Yeah, I, uh, I started, uh, I think, right after my MBA. I was working for my, my parents who run a golf course, and I, I, I always thought that's where I'd end up. Uh, and then after getting my MBA, I realized I wanted to go out and do something on my mm -hmm. own, uh, and the MBA kind of gave me the leverage to, to kind of get my foot in the door at a big company, so I worked nine years at RBC. Um, I worked all in commercial finance. I started as an account manager working directly with businesses, uh, and then I moved on mm -hmm. into the risk management department, uh, mm -hmm. working, helping approve loans, and then on to uh, the national office with a strategy job, uh, really looking at the policies and procedures mm -hmm. behind lending businesses money. Um, and then I guess that's kind of where things And Then, then uh, last changed. year you, you made a big change in your life, so tell us about that. Yeah, so I, uh, uh, well, I have two little girls, and mm -hmm. uh, we sort of reached a point where, uh, you know, we were, I was working downtown Toronto in the financial district, and I was living in the suburbs and taking the GO train, and I, I didn't see a lot of the kids. They were sleeping when I left for work, mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, I sort of would have dinner and an hour to play with them at night, and, and that was it. So uh, we started talking about, my wife and I, about options to spend uh, more time with them, and I, I got a call from my parents. Who, who said, hey, uh, Brock Golf Course is uh, for sale. It's a little local course that I knew from, from growing up. And uh, uh, so we came and checked it out. And it's, a, you know, the nicest way to say it is it's a unique fixer-upper. <laughs> um, but uh, because of that, it was, a, you know, sort of in a price range we thought we could afford. And, uh, um, you know, so we, we sort of decided to take a big gamble. And so I, uh, so over the winter, we, we I left RBC after nine years. And I, things were going well. I loved it there. But uh, just... Uh, it was a big lifestyle decision, mm -hmm. and, and so we bought this golf course, and so my wife and I now, we live uh, on the property. Our house is right there, and we're, we're running a golf course full-time. Uh, it's been really fun. We were just finishing our first season uh, in the next couple of weeks, and uh, uh, it's been great. I have my family uh, 10 minutes away running a different course and, uh, and then available to uh, uh, you know give some advice or, or, or whatever we need, which has been great. And, uh, yeah, I think I... So you've come, you've come home. Yeah. yeah. And, and you're yeah. not that far from, from Brock here. Yeah. You're just like literally, what, two-minute drive? Yeah, well, it's, kind of, yeah. it's, it's about, I think yeah. everybody who went to Brock knows exactly where your golf course is. Yeah, <laughs> it's, and it's funny thing. I mean, we've called it Brock Golf Course, and I, yeah. I actually get asked a lot, oh, does the university own this course? And we say, well, no, I do, but I, I'm a Brock grad. So, <laughs> uh, uh, but, but it's uh, had Brock in its name throughout its, yeah, its since iteration. Yeah, it's, it's had different names, but it started as Brock Golf Land, and then it was the Greens at Brock, and now yeah. it's Brock Golf Course. But actually, yeah, it's been around uh, just since before the university, and now mm -hmm. he's Brock something or other in the name. So... Uh, we, we thought it was kind of fun to keep, and uh, uh, so it's been great. And uh, yeah, I think for us, uh, Niagara was just uh, it became a lifestyle choice. I think when you're when you're young and in your twenties, uh, living in the city and working in a you know live, living in a condo and working in the city is uh, pretty exciting. And you go to Jays games and all that stuff. And then uh, when you get a little older and you have kids, then it's mm -hmm. you know the go train and the, the the city isn't that exciting when all you do is is trudging in and out of Union Station to get to work. So. Um, you know, we started talking a couple of years ago about what, you know, how could we change and get a lifestyle we wanted. And we, uh, um, you know, this was perfect. My family's in Niagara. I love Niagara. You know, it's, it's, it's much more affordable to live. It's much more relaxing. And 
And do the, do the girls like it? Your little girls? They they love it. They yeah. you know they see so much more of me, and and yeah. uh, it's been pretty funny because we live right on the golf course. I mean, it's it's such a it's the same childhood I had, but not not a normal one by any means. No. <laughs> uh, you know, it's zipping. sort of like a lot of people's dreams. I well, just live on a golf course. Yeah, and you know, <laughs> zipping around on golf carts, and yeah. the kids. I think they think the best job out there is is clearing the golf balls off the driving range because we <laughs> drive around in this golf cart with a cage, and the people are hitting at you, and they just think it's hilarious every time the golf cart gets hit. So yeah. uh, it was a lot of fun, and they, you know, they, they, I think it's teaching them some good work skills and life skills that so they always want to help out. And and they're a little too little right now, but soon they'll be able to, uh, you know. Take, doing all, all the work on the golf course as well with you. Yeah, yeah. yeah I think they're not, not <laughs> You'll quite put them there to yet. Work. They're they're eager to learn though. They want to you know, and whether it's getting a few buckets of balls to bring into yeah. the pro shop or whatever, they're excited to help. And uh, and so it's really become a family business. And some days, if both of us have to work because we have a tournament, the kids will uh, hang out at the clubhouse and they'll they'll hit a bucket of balls on the driving range mm-hmm. or entertain themselves. Some days they're just coloring in the well, pro maybe shop. Maybe they'll be pro golfers at some point. You never know. Can always hope. Can always hope. <laughs> Early retirement yeah. plan. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, did you find your 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 experience at Goodman, your MBA, did it help you at all along the way? I mean, it's, I know you had you know family background in in this business, but uh, yeah. certainly I'm sure for for your entry into the RBC. Yeah, yeah the I think it helpful. it helped. That, you know, I, I had a business undergrad, so um, so so that was obviously helpful too, but. Um, the MBA really, it, it helped at the bank because it was a huge prestige thing, you, you mm-hmm. know, and, and I think some of the jobs I, I had and I applied for, uh, they wouldn't hire somebody without it. I mean, it was, it was, the, it was the minimum requirement to get your foot in the door for those jobs mm-hmm. people really want. Uh, and so without the MBA, I, I couldn't have had the career at the bank that I, I had. Um, you know, as far as what I learned, to be honest, I couldn't tell you what I learned in a finance class while I was here. But um, I, I think what really helped once you get to the bank, you find that there's computer systems to do all those calculations and stuff for you that uh, you maybe do in university. But the soft skills, the group work and the team projects and mm-hmm. papers you wrote as a group, um, I, mean, I mean, that stuff, I think, is, is frustrating when you're in university. And then you go into real life and that's real life. I mean, mm-hmm. you, you know, you're you're partnering with other departments, you're working on a team and um I think having a little bit of diplomacy and some soft skills to manage those uh, experiences really helped me get ahead. I I think my last job, I was working uh, strategic initiatives, which is basically I I would spearhead a change we wanted to make, and it was my job to go out to every department involved and and get them to buy in and come on board. And uh, so it was really about the soft skills. I had to know what I was talking about, but, but really how you approach people got everything done. And, you know, whether you did it over a coffee in the morning or sat in a boardroom with a formal presentation, I mean... Some work for some people, and some approaches work for others. And trying to figure out, mm-hmm. uh, you know, your audience and that, I, I think those right. were things you learned uh, while you're at Brock. Yeah. So, do you have any advice you'd give to students or entrepreneurs, anybody looking to start their own business, buy a business, uh, just in, in general, or even work in the in the banking industry? Well, I, I think I, I mean it's it's kind of fun now. I mean, when you worked at the bank, everybody just says. Oh, that's nice, and their eyes glass over when you explain <laughs> what you do. Um, but it's kind of every dream job of a finance major to work in a big bank. But uh, I think at the end of the day, I'd say I've kind of gone full circle. You know, I, I went from Niagara to Toronto and, and worked on Bay Street, and, and now here I am I live 10 minutes away from where I grew up, running a golf course exactly the same as my parents did. And I, I think so if I'm going to give advice, it's, it's do what you like to do because um, money isn't everything. And for, for, for me, as I get older, I realized uh, the lifestyle, the family mm-hmm. time, uh, is, is, is much or more important than, than any amount of money you can earn. And so whether you're going to start a business or you find a job you love, you do something you actually love, don't do it for the money because you, you just can't last. Yeah, that sounds like great advice. So I think with that, we'll uh, close for today. And thank you very much for, uh, for watching. And be sure to check out some of the other Brock podcasts. We have Consider This, our uh, research podcast, podcast and rock news. Um, They're uh, posted regularly. So thank you very much and hopefully we'll see you again.